The Evolution of ESPN ESPN is a leading American-based satellite and cable and television channel operating globally that directs sports-related programs encompassing pre-tape and live event telecasts, live shows, sports highlights, and several other original programs. Since it was founded in 1978, to the launch of the channel in September of 1979, and still being so prominent in the sports industry, it has had a lot of ups and downs in its journey and has come a long way. Therefore, it has also earned huge success, popularity, and a solid viewer base all across the world throughout its airing period. Do you want to talk about the evolutions of ESPN from the very beginning? Then do not go anywhere! And watch this video till the end to not miss any detail as today we are showing you how the company became successful. But before we dive into the video, subscribe to our channel for more amazing content like this and hit the bell icon so you get all the notifications. Here we begin. Origins ESPN was initially established by Bill Rasmussen, his son Scott Rasmussen, a 43-year-old eye doctor and Ed Egan, an Aetna insurance agent. Bill had a strong affection for sports for most of his life and was unfortunately fired from his job as the communications executive in 1978 for the New England Whalers. In his managing period with the hockey team, Bill had met Egan, who also exhibited an interest in starting a profession in television. Ed approached Rasmussen with the concept of developing a cable television program airing every month that covered Connecticut sports and was curious to find out if the Whalers would be eager to be the prime aspect of the show. Even though deterred by his layoff, Bill and Ed started to think about a new strategy. Rasmussen's initial idea was to develop a cable TV network that concentrated on covering all kinds of sports events occurring in their state, the state of Connecticut, which means it included the Connecticut Huskies, the Whalers, and the Bristol Red Sox, instead of only concentrating on a single team as proposed by Egan. But Bill understood very little about cable TV in that period, and with under 20% of houses acquiring cable connection, developing such a network was tiresome. During the summer of 1978, Bill, along with Scott, Egan, and Bobbius, who was Ed's associate and a mass of video production business, started to seek out assistance from various cable operators and conceivable investors for their sports channel that they had decided to name as ESP or Entertainment and Sport Programming Network. The group commenced pitching their concept in June of that year, persuading 12 delegates from their regional cable operators, but just five of them accepted their offer. In addition to this, their accepted delegates were also skeptical of their idea. They asserted that taking a chance on something that would ostensibly waver would be futile and too expensive. Despite the obstacle, the group held a press meeting to circulate the message. 35 columnists were invited, but only four attended, and they could have been more excited about the company's odds. Bob felt the prospect of ESP was in question and left the group after the conference. Despite the early difficulties, the Entertainment and Sport Programming Network was established in 1978 on 13 July for a sum of $91, but the group still had to discover a means to broadcast their sports channel. So they started their analysis at United Cable. They were informed about a modern means of television distributions through satellite communication. They were then directed to RCA, which had experience in satellite communication, having launched SATCOM into orbit and frequently using the technology in Europe. The concept was still new in the United States and was not immediately embraced. Finally, Al Parinello, who RCA hired to promote the new technology, received a phone call from Rasmussen and wanted to meet with him in person. At the meeting, Bill explained they were interested in regional sports broadcasting However, Parinello explained that satellite communications could broadcast their channel across the country. Furthermore, they were informed that buying a continuous 24-hour satellite feed was less expensive than sending the signal across Connecticut via landlines. They agreed to buy the transponder for the satellite. With a broader audience base to contests, they started to revamp their original idea. In August of 1978, the father-of-son duo conceded that the channel would broadcast all kinds of sports 24 hours a day. 
and have a 30-minute sports show at night. They also decided to hire sportscasters and purchase a fleet of vehicles to transit across the country, covering numerous sports events. By arranging money from several family members and subordinates, they collected $30,000 for the transponder, but the group had to look for an estate to base their headquarters on and decided to buy a portion of land for a sum of $18,000 in Bristol constructed on a dump as the satellite signal was steady in the area, thus making it an excellent location. College Sports Rights With the financial assistance they could find, Bill knew that ESP would battle to obtain the rights to professional air sports at that time. So instead, he felt the company should strike a deal with the NCAA or National Collegiate Athletic Association for the agreement to rebroadcast their college sports events. During that time, college basketball was popular, and Bill believed that rebroadcasting games like fast-paced basketball would earn more viewers. Furthermore, retaining a contract with the NCAA assisted in legitimizing ESP without Bill having to use the Getty name to alleviate his further pursuits. In the May of 1979, Getty procured $15 million for the channel and Anheuser-Busch came to a treaty with ESP for the biggest advertising agreement in cable television history in that period, priced at $1.38 million. Expansion ESPN tried to make itself stand out from its competing channels by utilizing the top journalists for all of its respective sports at the beginning of the 1990s. For example, Peter Gammons covered baseball, Chris Mortensen covered football, Al Morganti covered hockey, David Aldrich covered basketball, and Mel Kiefer covered NFL drafts. The late 1990s and initial 2000s experienced substantial development within the company. ESPN launched its radio undertaking in January 1992 and has experienced enormous success. So ESPN2 was initiated on 1st October 1993 and began with the telecast of Sports Night, which Susie Kolber and Keith Olbermann hosted. After three years, in November of 1996, ESP News was initiated with Mike Tirico as the first anchor of the channel. ESPN expanded into video gaming by assembling forces with game broadcaster Sony ImageSoft for a succession of video games in 1993. The venture was short-lived though and only released limited titles for the Sega Genesis and Sega CD. Disney intended to commence an ESPN West in late 1998, a local sports network for Los Angeles that would broadcast live sports game of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim and Anaheim Angels. Then however, the plan was renounced. In January 2008, ESPN accepted a multi-million dollar agreement with MLG or Major League Gaming a professional gaming circuit. In April 2009, ESPN inaugurated a broadcast productions building at the LA Live Complex. The five-story building accommodates to television production studios that have digital control cabins. In October of 2008, ESPN commemorated its 30th anniversary with the broadcast of 30 for 30, a succession of documentaries directed on major sports events and stories that's transpired over the past 30 years during which the network had been on the air. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, sporting leagues tested their players if they tested positive and stemmed in cancellations to nearly all conventional sporting events happening globally for a few weeks, which resulted in them undergoing major changes in their programming catalog, choosing to exhibit replays of sports documentaries, traditional sporting events, and broaden news programs. Do you watch ESPN? What is your favorite sport to watch? Drop your answer in the comment section below. This is for today, but we'll be back soon with more interesting content, so stay tuned. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to always get all updates from us. Thank you for watching.